I don't want to fall over. <laughs> yeah, don't fall Shatters. over like I did in the parking lot, like a fucking timber fucking tree. <laughs> timber wolf. I was going to say timber wolf, but timber wolves don't fall. Know, they don't fall over. <laughs> You're like timber. Tree. Timber, the bitch is going down. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Dark Collective Podcast with me and Miss Jen. We are so excited for today's interview. We have the ever so lovely, because I always say ever so lovely, <laughs> but actually just a badass human, Fire Drake, Tracy. She is amazing. I love her so, so much. She really is great. Dude, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but we actually record our intro separate from the actual podcast with the author, vendor, or whoever we have. And most of the time we do it before they come on, but this time we did it after. So yeah. you guys, she is such a badass and makes such cool stuff. Like if you can watch this on YouTube and you guys are listening on Spotify and your car to run the way to work, just get on for like a couple minutes just so you can yeah. see her backdrop. Her life, it's, so it's a cool. library. Like it is so library. cool. It is so like, cool. I think I'm cool with my books and so I see like <laughs> Tracy's books and I'm like, never mind, I'm trash. <laughs> Maybe I'll get there. <laughs> we're really excited though, just because I mean you guys, can you believe that we're already we're already in April of twenty twenty four? That is absolutely insane. As of next month, it Shut will up. be a year <laughs> since we met, but also a year since Sinners was born. Like yeah. that's insane. I know. Like I know. It's just crazy to me that it went by so, so fast. I know. But the same time, it was like, we've been friends for years. <laughs> I know. And it's even crazier that we're already like steamrolling on 2025. Like it's I already know. happening. We just announced dates uh, at the time this comes out like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I just, I'm so excited about our dates because it's the same time. It's, you know, August 15th to the 17th and it is going to be in Boston again because that's just where we love to be. Yeah, I had never been to Boston until Jen took me twice, so it was it's amazing. Wonderful. It's just it's all so about the food. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. the food. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I want to move to Boston just for the food. I know. I know. And we, I mean, you guys heard us talk about this. We are doing a ton of events this year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with 2025, we are really excited to bring on more authors and just more information for you guys to find out as we go. Obviously, no spoilers here. Um, yeah. but on top of that, because of these events, we actually have a big event. You have two yeah. events coming up, but we have a huge event coming up yeah. in a couple weeks. So for anyone that's actually, by the time this comes out, I will have just gotten back from Readers Take Denver. So I hope you guys stopped by the booth and said, hi, it's already Lamaco. Um, but like three days from now, it will be a polycon yeah. and we will also be there. It will be me, Red and Jess and yes. we'll be in our little booth. With all of our chaos, just being crazy. <laughs> so I apologies to anyone around us in advance. Yes. Um, we might be a little loud, but we're a fun time, okay? So mm -hmm. come say hi. <laughs> I will tell you, when we were at the last event where it was me, Jen, and Jess, uh, it was so much fun because Jess and I literally just stood in the aisles like, hey, come to our booth. What do you want? A dagger? <laughs> do you want a bat peen? Oh, my God. Those. <laughs> it was so much fun though um i can't say i was talking to caitlin taylor the other day about our jello shot toast oh my did. god i forgot about that i forgot jesus christ like, please can we do jello shot toast at sinners and i was like absolutely <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of alcohol that weekend i, mean, I don't remember all that we drank but there, it was, was i lot. just you know my favorite moment from that weekend um, is terrible. the Probably man the mac and cheese that was hilarious. Jen loves mac and cheese. You want to wait to Jen's heart? Bring her mac and cheese. Doesn't matter what kind it is. As long as it doesn't have mushrooms, she's happy camper. It's fine. And I'll eat uh, mushrooms some stuff, but not mac and cheese. <laughs> but my favorite moment from that weekend was the man hot tub time when all the oh dudes were in the hot tub together. So, so, so uh, for those of you who don't know, like I'm psychotic when it comes to picking out Airbnbs. Like I mm -hmm. want all the amenities. I want a huge outdoor space. Like I don't even care what the inside looks like. I want the outside to be amazing. And this place had a pool and it had a waterfall jacuzzi. And that's <laughs> where all the guys were hanging out one night. Oh, and so I was funny. Just like, it makes me think of the episode of New Girls, whatever. He's like, do you want to come sit in my jacuzzi? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I pictured. 
Do you remember that one viral? I think it was not even TikTok. I want to say it was a vine. And it was like two I'm guys not. sitting in a hot tub, far enough so they're not touching each other. <laughs> like, <No. laughs> but the funny thing was, was that it was, who were all the guys in the, in the hot tub? It was Cody. John. John. Cody, um, Henry. Henry. But who was the fourth? I think it was China's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. It was China's boyfriend. It's exactly yeah. who that was. And they were literally think, oh, bundled Eric, up together. And Eric, there, yes, too. there was five of them and they were all bundled together and they were just like talking about the dumbest shit. Do like, you remember when we were on the hot tub and we held toes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and all of us, when we got there day one, we all got the hot tub and we linked up our toesies. Oh my God. I, it was beautiful and magical. What about the time where I was drinking a drink and I was like, oh, this tastes really good. I hope it gives me a good buzz. And they're like, Red, that's a mixer. Do you remember that? There was no alcohol. No. How about the time when we were there for like two hours and I missed a step and rolled my whole ankle and I was like, <laughs> or when I ordered barbecue for everybody <laughs> and the, the, I hate this place. I'm going to leave them a bad review every single day from here until I die. Um, the, so it was like large sides. This is how big the canister was. I, I swear mm-hmm. to God, I'm not exaggerating. I probably have a picture. I will make you do. You definitely here. have a picture. The, the, they're like this big. It's filled <laughs> to here. <laughs> and it's a full side. And they shorted us one side, gave us no rolls. Everything was cold. It was the shittiest thing I've ever put in my mouth. And that's saying a lot. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, we got off topic, but this, this, this is how oh, yeah, it sorry. is. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I love it because this proves a point. You will make the bestest of friends at these events and you will have the funniest stories. Like we still have stories we haven't told from yeah. that one weekend. So if you are freaking out about going to any of these book events and going alone and not having yeah. a friend, you will make them. I promise. Most like, of the people in our Airbnb, Airbnb had never talked. Like I nope. never, met. never met. I was the only one that talked to everyone, mm-hmm. which is hilarious. Cause if you know me in real life, I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> no. And we constantly tell her she's a gravitational force. People just come to her. And then she just is like, friends, meet friends. Like, let's all be friends and hang let's out. Let's all be friends. <laughs> oh, it was God, wonderful. Yeah. I'm really excited for a Polycon. This will be the first time I've ever gone. I've only ever gone to one other bookish event. Um, but by the end of this year, I've gone to like 19, you know, whatever, but who's counting? counting? Um, but I'm very excited. Um, I'm excited also that it, it's being held in its own little city of a hotel, you know, so there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, but if you guys are there, look for the giant redhead and platforms, look for the really tiny brunette blonde that just big is boobs. That, big yeah, boobs, <laughs> real loud. She's just as loud as I am. And then you yes. will find Jen hiding under her table. I'll be in the back being like, <laughs> <laughs> but not making uh, a noise. Actually, exactly. I might be, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to bust out of my, my comfort zone. Oh, we love be that. louder. Be louder. Be louder. All right, you guys. So we are super excited to have who we have today, Jen. Tracy from fire drink. All Artistry. right, you guys. Right? <laughs> I was like, artistry. Artistry. Fire drink artistry. I love yes. that. All right, you guys. Enjoy. Woo! Um, hey, guys. Welcome back. And we are here with the ever so lovely Tracy from Fire Drake Artistry. Hey. Hello. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. I'm really, Yay. really good. Busy. Crazy as always, but good. Yes. Naturally. Mm-hmm. Naturally. This is like some of the busiest months in, like, book world right now. Oh, yeah. It's oh, just yeah. so wild. It is so wild. Somebody of us. I think at the I think it's crazy because like I I love how it's like wedding season and now it's bookish event season. Yes, we're all just is. gearing up for it. Like yeah. yes. We're like, it is. Okay. The like sharing, but what are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> I just ordered two flapper dresses for events and I gotta try them on. They just came oh. in yesterday. So I love flapper themes. I love it because when you're voluptuous, like Jen, she's just going to be like, look at me dangle. I'm dangling. They all have little tassels. Like both of them have like, I'm ready for it. See me and my assistant, we always dress like opposite because she's like super sunshiny and I'm not. And she was, and we were actually talking about your event and she was like, oh my God, what are you going to wear to the ball? I was like, I'm going to be a fucking star. (laughs) I bought a gold crown. I bought a solid gold, like liquid gold dress. I've got all gold jewelry. I'm like, I'm a fucking star. 
She's like, well, if you're going as a star, I'm going as a star. So she's like in the solid silver. So oh, we're, that's so that. cool. That's amazing. It's funny because like I wear all black all the time because like I my do. nails, my tattoos, my hair, my everything. So I just, mm -hmm. that's enough accessories of color. So I just wear all black all the time. So like when we were talking about what all of us are going to wear, you know, cause it's sinners and stardust. Like I'm like, oh, I'm sinner. I'm all black. All I'm black. All black. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm wearing yet still. <laughs> That, that was my original all. thing because I always only wear black. Like I'm, I, I wear black, but then I found this what? gold, like star, like actual fucking star crown, and I was like, "Oh no, I have to wear that." Well, now <laughs> I have like, this is one of the dresses that I ordered because it's over here on my. Th I was trying these on the other day, so I have like I ordered five or six dresses from I think Fashion Nova because they were having a sale. It was like thirty dollars to fifty dollars each. Like, oh, nice. this. is this still out of my comfort zone? But it's so shimmery. Oh my I god, I love, really it. <laughs> I love it. So For those shivery. of you who cannot see, it is like a bustier covered in rhinestones and oh, black and silver. I would love it. I love <laughs> it. Dazzling on a dress, yes. Like, Girl, if I can't see you from 20 feet away, I can't see you. You're like, where's Jim? Like a beacon. Star. <laughs> Spotlight. Spotlight. Yeah. I guess starting out, what made you want to open a bookish shop? So that's kind of a long story. Um, it's it. one, uh, that is kind of crazy, honestly. Uh, my, I, I, people that have followed me for a long time know that we're a very medically complex family. Uh, my son has been very, very medically fragile since the day he was born. Uh, 2019 was his make a wish trip. We went in November, um, and did like his whole make a wish trip and it was amazing. And then like a month later, the pandemic started and happened. Um, and I know that the pandemic is like very different for everyone, but as a medically complex family, it was very hard for us. We went from having yeah. 30 to 40 hours worth of ABA speech, physical therapy, feeding therapy, doctors and specialists, like coming into our home. Um, to his uh, pulmonary doctor and his neurologist pulled everybody out of the house. Nobody was allowed to come in that wasn't living there because he was too high risk. Um, we were doing like chest BT on him four times a day. Uh, it was a lot. It was a lot mentally. I have kidney disease and asthma. So I was also concerned about myself. Um, it was a lot. So the pandemic was very isolating and very, very hard for us. Um, and to the point, my husband was like taking my phone. Uh, so I had a friend named Gloria from, we've been friends since the sixth grade. We were college roommates for a little bit. Um, and I was talking to her one day and she goes, you know what you, I've noticed you haven't been reading in a long time. And I said, no, I can't like think about anything else. She's like, I think you need to start reading again. She goes, I'm going to send you this series. This is what I want you to read. And it was Akatar. Um, so I started reading it and I've, oh my gosh, I couldn't put it down. I was obsessed no, I with it. Um, and then she told me to read Six of Crows, which I read. And that's also one of my other favorites. Um, and at the time, my husband was just trying his best just to get me to do something um, to take my mind off of things. And he knows I'm, I've always been a creative. I love interior design. Um, so we ended up buying a Glowforge laser. Um, and I was making just stuff for people in the neighborhood, like just home decor items, basically like Hobby Lobby kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things I made was like the tier tray sets, you know, those cake stands that have the stuff on it. So I, I made like the little five inch signs that went on, decorated those. And I did those for all the ladies in the neighborhood and myself and my friends on Facebook, things like that. Um, so after I read Akatar, I was like, well, this sounds really stupid, but these are the perfect size for my little bookshelf. And at the time I had like two bookshelves that were only half of a book. <laughs> we all started with those uh, little ones. We all started there. <laughs> I was like, wouldn't it just be so dumb if I just made some themed ones about, cause every, and I made six because when you make the tier tray sets, you make five or six of them for each yeah. set. Um, so I made six, um, which was my uh, original ones, which were the Valaris round and all of those together and the Alarian training, which I still sell from time to time. Um, and I put them on my shelf and I took a little photo and I sent it to my friend Gloria. And I said, I know I'm so stupid, but I just wanted my shelf to be pretty. And I couldn't find anything on Etsy. I couldn't find anything anywhere to make my shelf pretty. I mean, there were plenty of shops that were making like wall signs or actual like library signs and that kind yeah. of stuff, but they weren't making like things to make your shelf pretty. So I was like, well, I made this and maybe it's just for my shelf or whatever. And she has been in the book world for a long time and uh, uh, like really deep into the book community. And she goes, I'm about to share this with my Facebook group um, and you need to be ready 
because they're going to, they're going to want these. This is going to be like a big thing. Um, so that was really cool for me. Um, and it was crazy how much people loved it. I met people right away that were like, oh my God, I've never seen this before. What the hell? Why are your signs so tiny? They're so cute and so tiny. Like that was like the big thing. Um, I had met a few other shops uh, that did sell like the wall art or the library signs. And they were like, how tiny are those signs? I was like, well, they're the perfect size to not like obscure your books and to have like a little piece of the fandom that you can just decorate your shelves with and make your shelves pretty. Um, so that was kind of how I got started. Really, it started with my husband and some of my friends just really getting behind me and saying, you need to do something creative. And that kind of snowballed from shops contacting me and going, Hey, this is how you get licensing with SJM. You need to get licensing and you need to be selling these things. Um, baby bird, I'm going to take you underneath my wing and we're going to do this, uh, which is why I'm also passionate about helping other shops. Um, and getting them rolling and helping them with stuff because uh, there were people that were there for me when I first started. Uh, and it's just kind of, that's really how it all started. It just, it was a way for me to distract myself from everything else going on. Um, I'm a creative at heart. If I'm not creating something that's just asking for anxiety. So I'm just someone who's just, I like to make things. I, I and so that's kind of how it started. That's amazing. That's amazing. That is what? such a, I mean, I'm literally sitting here just like holding on to every word that you're saying. Like, my I'm God, like, your origin story could be a I book. Know. I'm like, I just, that's so wonderful. I love that it's like your friends and your husband and they were both just like, no, you need to do this. And you were like, okay, no. let me I see. Mean, honestly, my husband, he's in the military. My husband's a Lieutenant Colonel in the military. He has oh, his own. That's, that's that. I know yeah. that. I, um, I know so like he's getting ready to get promoted again and he's like so he's a big deal like he I mean he really is that's not me just saying that as a proud wife like he's a big deal at his job and what he does and he's very good at it like still in his military shirt just sanding away in the other room yeah. or, or running the laser and stuff that means a lot like I would absolutely not be able to do near what I've gotten done if it wasn't for him because sometimes fantastic. I need a nap and so we love a supportive partner. We love, her. <laughs> we love a supportive partner. I love that. That's yeah. so good. I well, a supportive partner. So you make all these amazing signs and, you know, you even had people like support you before you even started, which is so great. Yeah. But this may be a hard question, but what is the most favorite piece you've ever made? I have two and I'll tell you okay. why, because they relate to one another. Um, one is my original book dragon sign. I worked so damn, I put that dragon and everything in 50 different places trying to figure it out and that one's still a fan favorite every time we go to events people want the book dragon sign right. and it's mm -hmm. just it's just my like original book it's this hold on well, <laughs> it's very plain it's just i love it though oh well, that's beautiful <laughs> though and for those of you who can't see it she is showing it so go to youtube and watch Listen, sorry i'm gonna be spending so much money at all these events on tracy's shop it's not even oh awesome. stop it <laughs> um but then, but then my other one is my other book dragon that I turned into a tarot card once I got my new book. Oh, that's so um, So I'm just, so I've cool. always been a book dragon. That's where my shop, my shop name came from, uh, The Hobbit. So oh, it's kind it. of, the book dragon stuff will always be my favorite. Always. I love it because dragons are really huge right now in the book right. world, you know, yeah, like they so are big right now. They're like, so like they big right really now. really big. Then they kind of died out for a hot second. And then the mm -hmm. last few years they're like, boom again. And I'm like, You're for it. yeah. And Let's I love that go. in different series, they call dragons different things. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, like Draken or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like how they do different names for it. And I just, I love it though, because like Game of Thrones, that's what made me start watching it was because of right? the dragons. You know like what I mean? They have dragons? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, even my friend, uh, Katie, uh, from Clever Crow Design several years ago, she drew me as Manon, like with the Braxos in my hand. Um, and she drew the initial one with red hair with me. And then she had the one with blonde hair and her color of eyes for the other ones. So it was really cool. That's one of my most precious pieces. I have it really big in my office along with my oh. other piece that I got done by Art by Steph because I'm apparently very vain. Um, but like, this is me. This is me. I want it's me with, out of me. You know, wrinkles on those designs are nothing. Those are true blue friends right there. But they, <laughs> that wants me at 20. It's fine. <laughs> totally fine. Um, so I just always love dragons. Just always, always love dragons. Um, and I know that everybody, everybody knows 
that uh, smog was the last fire drake of middle earth so Mm -hmm. you know i know i say that stuff with my friends and they're like yeah crazy everybody knows oh no my in my household we watch we watch those movies more time than i can admit Mm -hmm. for those of you don't know what i'm talking about lord of the rings the hobbit Hobbit. yeah yep listen Mm -hmm. at my uncle and my aunt's house they literally in their downstairs family room have Mm -hmm. multiple multiple lord of the ring and hobbit posters framed Uh (laughs) <laughs> all on their walls and my aunt and my mom they're all obsessed like they have like all the yep. really cool dragon figurines and stuff oh, I, mean, I love it i have this on here like i all, love like, it you can't see it the dragon. dragons. Yeah. i have dragon mm-hmm. <laughs> i want one like that i like the dragons yeah I'm so like, see flying. even my so my patreon knows that i'm obsessed with dragons and stuff well we're never we're so busy all the time and we moved to florida this last year so we haven't really had time to like decorate our house and that's mm-hmm. my thing i feel comfortable when i've been able to decorate yeah and it feels like home it's homey yes it's more your home so like mm-hmm. mine and my husband's the uh the main suite area it's like a whole thing um and i'm like i want it to be all like the Hobbit. There's like an indent that's the archway, and I know people make those like really fancy or whatever. Oh, I yeah, no, I want the door of Doran. Like that. I want it. I want it to be the light up door of Doran, and <laughs> I want like like I have all of these things. So actually, in my Patreon this last week, I was like, guys, I'm gonna buy myself a treat after Sweetgrass. Do I get Gimli's battle axe? <laughs> Or do I get a Nazgul canvas painting? And so they've been voting all week on which one like, I can get. Can you get the battle axe? Can you get both? Can you you are a ginger that needs a battle axe. Like, that <laughs> needs to happen. <laughs> can you imagine someone breaks oh. in your house and you're like, ah! <laughs> Well, because, so I told my my influencers, like, I, I send them, like, silly stuff all the time. And so I told them I wanted the axe, the bow, and the sword as because we have this huge wall in our bathroom that's just, like, blank. And I was like, I want to put like all of those together on this wall. And uh, one of my influencers, Pierre, she was like, I could just see, like, can you please, like in the Tolkien writing put above that, wash your hands or lose them? Because they all know, because they all know that I'm like a clean freak. I always have like hand sanitizer at my table and things like that. Like, I'm just, I'm a a little bit of a germaphobe. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, you know. Yeah, and so she's like, you just have to put that up there. (laughs) I love that so much. Yeah. Damn it. That's so we'll, perfection. We'll, we'll see this weekend if, which one I'm getting, but uh, some of my followers are like, you should just get both. <laughs> I'm going to go join Tracy's Patreon and I'm just like multiple different names oh, so I can like <laughs> vote and it'll be like Battle Axe, Battle Axe. <laughs> yep. Oh, no. so, okay, so what has been the hardest part of owning a shop? I think trying to get past uh, the exhaustion and the burnout. Um, burnout has, is, is a real thing. One of my favorite quotes ever, and will always be one of my favorite quotes, um, was from Iron Man three, when he says no amount of money could, uh, what is it? Hold on. I got it. I got it. Sign. Hold on. I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. But no, it's no amount of money ever bought a second of time. Um, and so this was the very first sign I ever made on my Glowforge, And that was something that I told myself I needed to remember. Um, as a business, you know, my kids are 10, 12 and 14 now. Um, they all have birthdays coming up. They're only getting a little bit older. And while this is fun and great and exciting, uh, every minute I spend in here is time that is spent away from them. So that's, that's really one of the biggest hurdles I've come over, um, starting my business and stuff too, is really, you know, being able to manage that time. It is very Um, hard to I agree with you because there's a quote that a lot of people love that I hate. I hate it. And it's imitation is the best form of flattery. It is not. And and I don't believe in that in my industry, you know, like I, on my page, I have a very specific aesthetic on how I photograph hair, how I use my editing tools, the vignette, like all of it, you know, and like the hand poses, you know, like, it's just like, whatever, never directly, you know, been like, Oh, I'm going to edit it just like that. You know what I mean? And it's in this, what I love about the bookish community is how loving everyone is, you know, and just how supportive everyone is. But when it's your blood, sweat and tears, you know what I mean? It's, it's not flattery. So yeah. can I, can I tell you what I feel about imitation? Yes. Yes. Imitation is the absence of originality is what imitation is. I like that. I like that a lot. Can you put that on a sign? 
right? <laughs> exactly. Well, because because I, I've talked to this with other people before. I, I said this in another interview that I had with another event too. Um, they were like, what advice, you know, could you give other shops and things like that? And my, I always stem back to be original. Mm -hmm. And so to, to feed off of what you said, one of, one of my quotes that just makes me cringe that I always hear is there's always enough room at the table. And that generally comes from people that are sitting at other people's tables. So make your own fucking table, you know, everybody's welcome. Yeah. But be original. Make your own table. Why do you want to do something that somebody else is already doing? That says nothing about you. Everything I I try that everything I do is very distinctly me. So I think you're a very distinctual person because the one thing I like about you and you're so it's just obviously how instinctual you are about your own business, but how protective and loving and supportive you are of people who have originality. And I, mm -hmm. I just I love that about you. Well, thank you. That, I mean, that really is, I love promoting and helping other, I mean, you guys know I had a small business Saturday for three years on Saturdays, yeah. whenever I could, couldn't do it every Saturday, but whenever I could. Um, and I always did that because I'm like, these, like other shops deserve recognition. They're doing really cool. Like guys, you should check this out. This is yeah. amazing. It doesn't take away from me no. to promote other people. Like your win is my win. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the people that just, have the I know, I know we had discussed this before the the audacity to think well I'm watching you so therefore I can do too yeah mm -hmm. um and it's just kind of like don't you want to be yourself though don't you don't you want to be your own person don't you want to have something that's you why would you you, you guys already have one of me <laughs> right and You're that's like, the thing is it's, it's just like the, it's you read a dark romance book you read another dark romance book you read another dark romance book but they're completely separate Yes. You know what I mean? And there's, yes. th that's, mm -hmm. I think that what a lot of people don't realize is just because you read one dark romance book doesn't mean the next one's going to be exactly the same. No, no. I'm reading one now that's a dark romance, like nothing I've ever read before. It touches my soul. Well, I... that goes into our next question. Ah. What is the, <laughs> what is your favorite <laughs> genre to read and what are you reading right now? Okay. So my favorite, favorite genre to read will always be, um, romanticy. And just mm -hmm. general, I love dark academia and shifter romance. Those are like some of my favorite ones. Um, and what I'm reading right now is a book that was given to me at Sweetgrass by the most enchanting person I've ever met. Like you could just stare at her. Everything she said, like you hang on everything that she says. Um, it's Gianna Darling. Um, she, this is I her, love this her. Is her sapphic I think, novel. I just finished her um, Inked and Lies book. I think it's like the fifth or sixth in her Fallen Men series. Mm -hmm. And I is so good. <laughs> that, so that's good. my next, that's my next go-to, but, uh, Serpentine Wait. Valentine is her, uh, sapphic novel. I'm like this writing. She's so intelligent. There were times I found myself going back and rereading paragraphs. Cause I'm like, wait, she's too smart for me. I have to, right. try I love books um, like that though. When I have to go back and read yeah. multiple times, because I'm like, am I just too dumb? Like, I feel like this is. <laughs> I read, no, I comprehended nothing in the last yes. pages I read. I got to go back. But then, but then when you do comprehend it, you're just like, yes. oh my gosh. It's like mind yes. blown. <laughs> yeah. I just, I think she is a wonderful person. Uh, this book means so much to me. The story means so much to me. Uh, it's just amazing. So I, but I, yes, I love romanticy and I, yes, I love dragons and I love fairies and magic and all of those things too. But I just really, really love dark academia too. Gothic Anna is another one that I really like. I own that one. I just haven't read that one yet. It's really good. I really like it. Yeah. Coven, Coven by Harper Earl Woods is another one that's fucking. So you being a seasoned bookshop, you know, a lot of people know who you are. We're obsessed with you. You know, when new bookshops spring up, what are some of the questions that they ask you or what is the main question they ask you for help with? Um, one of the biggest questions that I typically get is trademark and copyright questions. I get a lot of those, you know, what should I trademark? What should I copyright? Things like that. Um, I've had a lot of experience with that over the last couple of years. Um, I get a lot of licensing questions. There's a lot of mixed licensing information out there. Um, authors and, uh, agencies and publishers typically have a general way that they license, but there are some things, you know, that 
small shops should also watch out for because there are people that can take advantage of small shops that I've seen licensing that's very predatory towards small shops. Um, so my big thing is making sure that they don't get taken advantage of and they're able to protect their intellectual property. Um, I've helped with some website designs, um, and things like that logos. Um, I love helping people with names. Uh, you'd be shocked at how many people have messaged me and been like, I want to change my name. Yes, you probably should. You should probably make it <laughs> more in general. Cause you know, when I first started out, uh, I was called Quail Family Creations, which was my last name. Aww, um, yeah. So Quail Family Creations was our name. And then I was in the book community for like two months and went, okay, branding, I've got to change all of this. Um, so how do I, what do I want it to be? And then my favorite movies are The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And those are my favorite books as well. Um, and so I was like, we were just snowballing around things that I'm really interested in and what I really like. And that's how we came up with my name. And so that's usually generally making sure that your name talks about you and your product and what you do, which is why we're fire Drake artistry, dragon wings and wooden things. Cause fantasy is like my general, um, aesthetic with all of my stuff. So that, that's my thing. I usually give them advice, make sure that your intellectual property is protected, um, and just be true to yourself. Make sure that you're doing, you're being authentic because people can tell when you're faking it. Um, yes. People will get by for a little bit of time being able to fake it or being able to mimic or things like that. Um, but people can tell, like, you just have to give it time. Uh, people know when you're being genuine. People know when you're being authentic. They're smart. People are smart. But for those of people who don't know, because you said it earlier when you were talking about SJM licensing, Mm -hmm. Do a quick synopsis of what licensing is. Like cause some people may not know what that means, especially people that are newer to the podcast. So licensing means that I have permission from the author to use their work for profit. Got it. Um, and I have done that since day one of sales. Um, I actually used to have other, cause I used to have other shops that made fun of me. They were like, we don't, what are you talking about licensing this and that? I had talked to authors and they were like, oh, well, I've never licensed with anybody before this or that. I'm like, well, you know, I, this is my licensing that I pay you guys and this mm -hmm. is how it's set up and things like that. So, um, that's basically what licensing is, is I personally think that everything that in my shop should be licensed, whether it's licensed with the artists that I work with and collaborate with to make art for some of my pieces, um, or it is licensing directly with the author. Um, I think that people that it is their original ideas and their intellectual property, they need to be compensated for that. So that's what licensing is. Thank you. I just feel like people are like, oh, what is <laughs> yeah. well, and even, even authors that I'm friends with, uh, like Scarlett St. Clair, um, I am friends with Daniel Jensen. Uh, they are some of the ones that don't require licensing. Uh, they just want art made and they're just excited about their books and their stories and things like that. Um, yeah, I still run every single thing by them. I don't <laughs> yeah, anything like, out sure. without a stamp of approval. Sorry, it's not going to happen. So, and, but that's just me. That's me wanting to make sure that I am true to what their vision is as well. Yeah, I love that. I'm always like licensing is absolutely intimidating to me. Like I'm licensed with one person and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I would want to be licensed with more because I don't like, I, I just feel like it's like we even said like, it's their baby. They pour their heart and soul into this. And I'm like, I don't ever want to be like, maybe I misinterpreted something. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate this. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. So one, one thing that I do, I've worked with a lot of other shops for too, especially with licensing, is making sure that you're not paying too much into licensing. Yeah. Um, and so one of my biggest things to new shops is you need to know what your net sales are. You need to track everything. Just because mm -hmm. you're a small business doesn't mean that you need to get taken advantage of. It doesn't mean that your time isn't worth something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like, hmm. All right. So being a bookish shop in like the vast world of readers and books and all that, what is your greatest achievement and your biggest downside that you've had? I think that my greatest achievement right now is that the authors and the publishing companies that are seeking me out to work with me. Um, for a long time, I was just like, well, nobody even knows I'm here. I'm invisible and that's okay. I've got a few people that, you know, like my stuff and, and this is going on and things like that. But, um, I am very flattered every time I get a message or a request to do something for someone because they like my work. That is the highest of praise. Um, 
I am not someone who considers a monetary return as the definition of success. Um, so that is really like just top tier for me. My biggest downside, honestly, is the time that I spend away from my family. Um, I am one of those weird people. I am absolutely obsessed with my kids. I'm obsessed with them um, and my husband. And I love spending time with them. One of our favorite, we live in Florida now. One of our favorite things to do is to go um, to Disney. My son loves roller coasters. He's nonverbal and he has epilepsy and all types of uh, conditions, but like he lights up. He's like a completely different kid. And I don't know if it's like the proprioceptive input that he's getting from like the movement um, yeah. and things from the roller coaster. But I have some of the best photos of my son. Oh. We can't even get, you know, to like look at a camera typically with photographers, but he's just like the happiest oh. thing. In the world. And that's everything to me. So the biggest downside is all the time I spend away from them. Yeah. Um, so I do try and make sure that I am purposefully taking time off now so that I can focus that time on them. Yeah. No, I that love that. Good. My daughter's actually at Disney right now with her dad oh, and her little sibling. Yeah. They just got there yesterday and they're going to be there all week. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I'm no, a diehard Disney really nerd and I go huh? to Disney every oh, other yeah. Monday. Um, I have it tattooed on my body. I'm a oh, Disney wait. adult. Well, wait, are you in Florida? No, I'm no. in California. California. I know she's lame. I'm in San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. San I was gonna Diego. say. Uh, so when are we meeting for Dole Whip? Oh, uh, girl, right? so good. I'll be right there. Wait, <laughs> it, are you close to Bethany? Like, I wonder if you guys are close to each other. Like, no. Bethany's in Tampa. Florida. Oh, she's in so Tampa. I. So I'm in. I'm I'm in the Tampa area. So like <gasps> oh, I. Come uh, I have so many lounge fly backpacks and spirit jerseys and mouse ears. I I have zero fucks to give. Like, Thank you. I, People make fun of me, and I'm just like, I just bought a a um a Big Hero Six backpack, and it literally. Oh, are you hugging? Yes. <laughs> yes. And the s'mores ears. People think I'm nuts, but I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Perfect. Chef's kiss. So I have. So we. I actually took a cruise with one of my really good friends, uh, Megan, that owns Novel Grounds in December, and we did a Disney oh. cruise. We did the Wish because I, my, you know, I told you my son was so a Wish kid, jealous. and I was like, we have to go on the Wish. Um, and that's when the Wish movie came out. Uh, for oh, Disney, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and Disney donates like I think it's ten or twenty percent of all the proceeds from all the proceeds from all the sales of their Wish Wish mer merchandise. Words are hard. Um, <laughs> of their Wish merchandise goes back to the Make a Wish Foundation. So oh, that's awesome. We are all about like I have the Wish backpack and the my friend Megan bought me the spirit jersey and I have the ears, the whole thing. Yeah, I love it. When you first started out you know, you, you learned, basically, we heard your story, you know, 2020 crazy year for you. We love how much you love your family, but what is one piece of advice that you would have given yourself and wish you would have known before starting? I think I've said this before. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. All the things that I have stressed about and I have found absolutely soul crushing with this business. Oh my God, I didn't get things out in time. Oh my God, I didn't this or that. Oh my gosh, I, I did this and I should have done that. And there's just not enough time. And it's not that big a deal. Um, I have learned, I have the hands down the best customers in the industry. We're not worried about it. We'll get it when we get it. You know, there have been times I'm like, I'm sorry. I was in the hospital with my son for three days. I I'm just trying to like get a hold of everything. I, I'm going to get your stuff. It's okay. It's fine. Like everything that you think as a business owner is this huge, just crushing thing. Usually they're not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like you're you're going to get over it and you're going to forget that you were even in that state. You were even in that place those things were going on because guess what? There's a new absolute insane amount of chaos that you now have to control and you have to, you know, move on and be able to do those things. So everything is definitely a learning opportunity, but it's also not that big of a deal. That's wonderful. I say that a lot. I love that, but I, tr but tr I truly do. I'm really bad at mimicking my own self, but no, it's, I, I think every time we ask this question, we get such a different answer that it's never been the same. And I think the closest we've heard is just write it in, from an author. Yeah. So for you to say, you know, it's not that big of a deal, like, yeah. don't mm -hmm. worry, it's fine. Just correlates so well. 
It's true. Yeah. And I feel like people in the book world, especially like I am very thankful that, you know, our event is the, in the book world, like our shops are in the book world. Cause I just feel like everyone's so understanding for the most part. Like mm-hmm. I agree, like the customers and the, it almost becomes like friendships and not just customers yeah. because the, mm-hmm. you know, the, most of these people like follow on social media and they get to know mm-hmm. you and, you know, so it's not just like someone behind a blank screen that you don't know who it is. It's like, you know, right. you become friends and yeah, I mean, shoot, people are used to waiting months for book boxes and stuff sometimes. So they're like, oh, an extra like couple weeks. That's fine. Those book boxes <laughs> save me every time. Right. I'm like, oh, I got it in before they did. Like, we're good. We're good. Yep. Yeah, so the, I mean, one of the reasons why you're here, because I don't, I mean, I'm sure we say at some point, but Tracy is going to be a vendor at Sinners and Sardust. Yes. So what are you most excited for Sinners and Sardust? Okay. So I'm excited about a lot of things. You can't just give me one on this. So I'm going to try and run these. I'm going to try and run these down a little bit. Um, I am so excited to meet you ladies. And I am genuinely saying that I have been following you. I have seen how passionate you guys are about this event how hard you guys have gone with marketing and social media and everything else. You guys are so original too. like seeing. <laughs> so you guys know that I'm drawn to originality. You guys yeah. are so original. All of the ways that you put things out, the way that you do things, the way that you write up things. It's just so unique that uh, my assistant, Jesse and I instantly were just like, we have to be a part of this. Like we have to be a part of this. <laughs> um, and the other thing is the food. Um, I, I passionately follow all of your updates about the restaurants in the area and things like that. And I, I'm just, I'm There's starving. So I can't wait to get there. <laughs> like, I feel bad because I'm like, some of these people probably want us to go and look at like, I don't know, monuments and like no, museums. We're and all stuff. hungry. But, but when we're there, I literally, you could ask the girls, I'm looking up restaurants like mm-hmm. months in advance. So, because mm-hmm. that's another thing you want to make sure to make your reservations at least, at least a month in advance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, cause it, one, it's Boston. So it's already crazy. And then with the convention and I'm sure there's tons of other stuff going on in August, like what it is wedding season. So like, you're yeah. going to make sure to book. Um, but I'm literally like stalking, looking for the best places for food that are, you know, relatively close by. And yep. yeah, I'm just like, oh, this is so well, good. The food's that's so always good. us at events. Like everything is they yes. like my assistants know I am food centric. So I'm going to at all times need to know where lunch is coming from and dinner's coming from and snacks. Who's yep. getting the coffee? Like we need to know where the location <laughs> of the nearest Starbucks is before anyone gets on a plane to get there. Um, so the like food is a, like, we're already planning out all the food places. Yeah. Yeah. We already have multiples that we are so excited to go back to. I think. My oh my God. I just place. want the fry pan of pasta. That's I want the fry about. pan of pasta. It's, get the, I don't even like mushrooms. If you're not allergic to them though, like get the mushroom truffle oil ravioli oh. thing. At, uh, mm-hmm. at With an like, espresso martini. Tr- it's been trichotri. voted the best. I don't know. <laughs> it's so good. We'll all have to go because I could eat that every day of my life. And never oh, that sounds so good. And I'm a cannoli. I'm a whore for cannolis. I oh. <laughs> I'm and like, dream. I'm like, like boss. Is it lunch? Is it dinner? I what time is it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, I'm that way too, though. Like every, like when we go on Disney trips or when we went to Universal, like we usually stay at the Lowe's Portofino hotel. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. And so it's based off of Portofino, Italy. Mm -hmm. So they have like the mama's, the restaurant downstairs. So good. I think Riley and I stayed at the Lowe's Sapphire. I think, I think Mm -hmm. it's like the, like one right below it. Um, we stayed there. We went to a couple of the restaurants there and it was so good. City walk here for it. Yes. Yummy. <laughs> Nothing like showing up after you've been at the park all day to a five star restaurant where all the waiters are like white full tuxes ready to right. see you in the grand room and you're like, I don't usually look like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like cute, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's fine. My husband's in his Duff beer shirt from The Simpsons. Yeah. Oh, that's my husband. He got the sweatshirt that has the fucking bottle opener yep. in it. Like he was so he amped was. about that. Yep. Yeah. all right miss tracy fire drake artistry you are fantastic and i can't wait love to you. just ask you to consent to give you a hug and give you love but if you don't that's okay because i do love you I'm like, um, no consent, no consent. <laughs> um, 
But we, from from me, I know Jen's gonna say something. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And I, I know that you don't like spending away time from your with your from your kids. And we <laughs> just love you so much, and we just cannot thank you enough. Thank you guys. Yeah, and this was so much fun. I mean, I've talked to you for the last like how many ever months, and got to know you. And I just think you're such a wonderful person. Um, and I can't wait to see you at Polycon in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I can't wait to see you guys. You guys know that I adore you. I, I appreciate so much you guys letting me be a part of your event. I just, I know in my heart of hearts, it's going to be amazing. So we're all very excited for it. You, you ladies are just doing such a great job. So oh, definitely keep it up. I can't wait to see you. I know. I know. So, so fun. It's, it's fun because like every time I get excited to see someone, I'm like, just look for the really tall redhead in like what? nine inch boots. That's me. <laughs> The Jen hey. will just be like, hey. I'm like, pop out from back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. So how do we find you on socials and how do others find you on socials? So I keep everything very simple. It is all my name. So TikTok and Instagram is at Fire Drake Artistry. Uh, my website is www.firedrakeartistry.com. Um, and same thing with our Facebook. It's Fire Drake Artistry. Um, so we just like to keep everything super, super simple. Oh, we love that. All right, you guys. So please make sure to check out the Dark Collective podcast every Monday. Go ahead and click the link in our bio and Instagram. We are on all platforms. I hope you guys watch this on YouTube just because you'll get to see her amazing backdrop and all of, all of her cool art because I'm obsessed with it. So our, It's amazing. Uh, so every Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern. And thank you again, my dear. We will see you guys later. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.